I wasn't terribly good at school. I didn't really get many qualifications. But what I was able to do, I really got interested in ceramics, and I started making these models. I found I could actually sell them. I started selling them to the teachers, and then um, I had commissions. <coughs> and I, I thought, this is, this is pretty good. Um, and I started to make a link between design and, and um, making business and making money. I left um, in disgrace at school at a rather early age with very few qualifications. And um, about that time, my grandfather, who was an engineer, um, gave me a welding set. And my father, to keep me out of trouble, bought me some old lawnmowers, and I, I started making them into go-karts, uh, much to the uh, annoyance of the neighbours, and uh, highly dangerous, as you can see. But they went really fast, and I got really interested in the engineering. And I started to believe and begin to understand that design wasn't just about making things look pretty, but actually how they work. I then went on to uh, St. Martin's to do a foundation, and then went on to Central St. Martin's to do a BA in industrial design. And um, amazingly, I got in because I didn't have any of the required qualifications, but I got in on the strength of my portfolio, which I think is a really great lesson for everybody. And whilst I was at the Central School, I designed this, which was my entry for the RSA Student Design Awards. It's an airport in a suitcase. And the idea was that you could actually carry things around and then open it up, and then the play would extend out of the suitcase. I happily won a, a, this, this, this award. I then, the following year, I, I, was, uh, I went to the Royal College of Art, where I was studying, and I entered again, and um, this time for a, a, a pill dispenser. And I came up with an idea of actually how you could indicate how, when you took your last pill and when you should take the next pill. And it won it again, which is fantastic. And from that, um, I won some <coughs> prize money, which um, allowed me to travel. I was able to travel to China, and this goes back to um, the late 80s. And the Royal College of Art managed to organize me to travel to China and to visit a number of colleges to do some lectures. I visited three colleges. And this is what I saw when I was there. At that time, obviously, you couldn't normally travel in China. And um, throughout my journey, there was a man that followed me, with me, and never spoke to me. He was just with me. But it was the most amazing experience. Um, I was in towns where people had never seen a Westerner, and there were sort of hordes of kids following me laughing. And uh, it was just such a joyous, joyous experience. And also the fact that um, everybody spoke to each other and everyone's on bicycles. It was an absolutely amazing experience. Unfortunately, this is a photograph I took last week out of my hotel room near our office in China. That's um, actually pollution and traffic and not many bicycles. It's become something that I'm very, very interested in, is, is what are we going to do about cities and what are we going to do about changing um, people's uh, way of travelling and how people are going to actually survive in cities. Uh, you could look at Mexico City at 9 o'clock in the morning, you could look at New York at 9 o'clock in the morning or anywhere in the world, and you'll see this kind of scene. And um, cities are dying, but more people are leaving and moving to cities. So what are we going to do about it? And I, I've always had ideas, and I've always tried to come up with ideas to try and solve those problems. And this is an idea I had, and um, one that, that has had quite a lot of interest. And it's called Moving Platforms. I'll show it to you now. So the, the idea is that um, you can travel seamlessly from outside this building uh, to another street in another city in another country without stopping. I, I always thought that um, the, the, the railway system is a bit pre-internet, it's not connected, and it hasn't moved on very much. And we're designing high-speed trains for different countries around the world, and it's the same system. The first railway station was designed over 180 years ago in Manchester, and it's still in use today, exactly the same form. You still get wet waiting for a train. And... Um, here, which we've got, you know, since then we've learned to fly, we've invented the motor car, and it's still, we're still doing the same thing. So I think we have to question that. I come up with these ideas and, and push these ideas to try and get people to think differently, and the response to this has been absolutely amazing. 
So I'll finish off there. I just finish off by saying that to all the people that entered the uh, RSA Design Awards and, and, and the successful as, as well as the people that, that will do better next time and, and uh, <laughs> win next time, I, I do think it's, it's a fantastic experience and a fantastic exercise in trying to hone your eyes to ears down and express it and, and explain them in a very simple way. And it's a really, really good skill to develop through the rest of your life and uh, essential, as you can see, because we're still doing it. <laughs>